Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Electronics Pedia. Today in this video, I am going to explain about the basics of clock heating. So I am going to cover what is clock heating, why clock heating is required and what are the different clock heating techniques. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and make sure you hit the bell icon so you receive all the further updates. So let's get started. The first one is what is clock heating. Clock heating is a technique to get off the clock to a particular module. So consider a design, you have a design and you have some data that is being fed in and uh, you know uh, you have some clock which is being fed and it's considered somewhere around 2.5 gigahertz. Now uh, this is your module. So now what happens is if you if this particular module is not being utilized but still you know in a, for some function right so it's not being used but you are still providing the clock to this block okay so now if you want to get off this clock now what you do is you employ a you know, clock gating technique CGC that's what we call it as a CGC technique so getting off the clock to a particular module is known as clock gating so now why do we do this clock gating so as I explained if you see, consider this same design now uh, the reason like you know if the module is not being used module meaning uh, if the uh, some function right so some function of your uh, uh, entire chip is not being used in some uh, uh, case right so then what happens is if you are continuously providing this clock now this module is always running and then what happens is your dynamic power dissipation so it increases so why it increases because this power dissipation dynamic power dissipation is directly proportional to the frequency switching frequency so now what do you mean by switching frequency switching frequency is the frequency of uh, that your uh, the, the clock which you are providing to this particular block and if it is continuous uh, the clock will be continuously toggling right like 0 1 0 0 1 like this right so because of this the the model the it gets a <coughs> uh, the model is running continuously and now what happens is it leads to the dynamic power dissipation okay so this that's why we uh, we try to get off this clock so that you uh, you know uh, reduce this dynamic power dissipation so now um, if you so there are different clock gating techniques are available so now um, what uh, so if you if i say this clock gating right so the simple thing that comes to everyone's mind is now this is the module like you know this is our AND gate okay so now what happens is you have this clock now you have this enable and this is a clock which is a gated so this is the common clock gating cell that comes to your one's mind if I say about the CGC now uh, let's try to understand how this clock gating this uh, technique how, I mean how this actually works with the help of the waveforms So this is my clock and now I have this enable signal which is like this okay now so it was over here like this it's like this now what is the output of this clock gate cell so this means this is my clock gated output so what happens when the enable is one now I'm going to capture the clocks in that window and when the enable is zero so i'm going to get off the clock okay so this means what happens is here it is zero now if you see my clock is one over here here and it went down and then it is exactly same like the clock now here the enable signal is becoming zero so my clock output also becomes zero like this so now this is the my gated clock so what happens is when this is one you are enabling the clock and when it is zero the clock is gated off so this works perfectly fine if you ensure that there is no chopping of the clock that happens so along with this clock it's a CGC or a clock gating it's also a clock chopper 
what do you mean by clock chopper now if you consider these two at, the, at these two windows right these two you know uh, edges you see what has happening here the enable is going one over here okay now what happened here you have chopped the half portion of this clock okay this portion is gone but you have only the half portion of this clock right this is only being sampled and then that is the clock you are getting now if you consider this uh, other uh, edge right so what's happening here only the half portion of this clock is present but the other half is gone okay because you are, did not sample that because the enable is not there so this clock gating say technique it's not really helpful in actual designs this is okay from the kind of you know understanding perspective but it's really it's getting off the clock but it's also doing the clock chopping so this is an undesired clock or this edges right like the half uh, half of the uh, you know uh, the uh, duty cycle is has been reduced for this particular edges right so this is not undesired in the uh, design and also it can lead to kind of some kind of a you know glitches also because because if the enable goes exactly near to this edge right so then it becomes kind of a spike or it can lead to a, some kind of a glitches your design is a your design may fail now uh, in order to overcome such you know uh, issues we have a technique called latch based clock gating so i'll just draw that diagram what is latch based clock gating So now, you can consider this as a D-latch. Now this is my enable signal okay and this is the clock here the clock will be inverted and this is the uh, uh, enable which is a latch output and this is my clock which is verified and this is my clock gated output. I will explain more about this you know latch based uh, clock gating technique in detail in my next video. Till then you try to analyze how this uh, you know clock uh, the latch based clock gating technique really works. Please if you have any questions please do let me know in the comment section. I will be happy to help. Thank you.